Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Bleeding Edge TV. I'm Andrew Edwards and we are continuing our review of LASIK thanks to our friends at, over at LASIK Plus. Um, today we're going to go in with Monica and actually show you the LASIK procedure. We're going to uh, bring our cameras into the operating room, show you the, uh, the procedure right on her eye, um, get commentary from her as it happens, uh, and a little bit more. So stay tuned, stick around, and... Uh, if you're squeamish, you may want to stop watching now. I'm taking volume because it'll calm my nerves a little bit. Because I'm a little bit nervous, so hopefully this will help. <laughs> You're putting it underneath your tongue. Mm -hmm. So it is all faster. I'm getting it through my bloodstream faster. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I just want to take one more look at your eyes. Uh, all your measurements look good. We're all set. Everything looks great. So just as before. I just want to explain some stuff about the surgery, just kind of give you an idea of what to expect. Okay. You'll feel pressure during the surgery, but you're not going to feel any pain sensation. Okay. The numbing drops take away any type of pain sensation. The pressure gets pretty strong, pretty firm. It gets strong enough that it'll usually cause your vision to kind of gray out or kind of just dim out on you. Okay. It's totally normal, but I like to stress that ahead of time so that you know nothing's going wrong. It's just from the pressure on the eyes. You won't feel any cutting sensation. When you feel the pressure, we're actually making the flap with the laser. Uh, but again, no cutting sensation, just pressure sensation on the eye. After we finish making the flap, pressure's gonna come off, vision comes back. We'll make the other flap on the other eye. After that, then we transition you over to the other laser, which is actually right next to the laser that's cutting the flap. The other laser is gonna reshape the curvature of the cornea, and that's what's gonna correct your vision by making the cornea have a flatter curvature, that laser is painless as well. You, you may smell a smell, it kind of smells like burning hair. Uh, the laser is actually not using heat, so it's not burning in the sense of heat, but the way the laser in interacts with the tissues, it, it gives off a smell that's kind of like burning hair. So normal, nothing's on fire, but it smells like burning hair. It's very fast, that laser is really quick. Before you know it, surgery is all done. There's going to be a little blinking kind of orange light that's going to give you something to focus on during the laser procedure. But again, you're not going to feel any pain sensation. You're actually not going to see the, you won't see the laser beam itself because it's actually not in a visible light spectrum, but you'll see a special light that just gives you something to focus on. Before you know it, surgery is all done and uh, the best thing to do afterwards is take a nice long nap. You'll notice some improvement in the vision even immediately after surgery because you're really nearsighted. But it'll be pretty kind of foggy. There'll be a lot of kind of fuzziness around the edges of things immediately after surgery. If you take a nap, even just for three or four hours, you're going to notice that things are already getting much sharper. And then by tomorrow, even with your prescription, most patients are seeing well enough to pass the, the vision standards for passing the, the driver's test. So it'll continue to get even sharper really for about a month after surgery, but there's so much improvement even by the next day that most patients are very functional and even even driving by the next day. It really matters. And that's pretty much it. Any uh, questions you can think of? Or? Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's head over to the uh, to the laser, and Mary's going to get you all situated. Um, we actually have three lasers. The laser right here is called the Interlase. Uh, it's an incredibly beautiful piece of equipment because it's extremely precise down in, to the south, thousandths of an inch. So we we can predict the the flap thickness, you know, to within a very uh, very fine parameter. So this is this is what we make uh, the flap uh, for the LASIK procedure with. And then we have two lasers that reshape the curvature of the cornea. Uh, the laser that we're going to use on Monica is the Visex uh, Star S4 laser. It has the iris registration system, which actually uh, measures uh, exactly the alignment of your iris. So it takes into account uh, where the patient's head position is, and it takes into account any tilt. We call it intorting or extorting their eye, either inward or, in, or, or outward. So, so it, it's very accurate for uh, treating astigmatism as well because it picks up exactly the alignment uh, of the eye. Both of these lasers are what we call eczema lasers, and they're basically 
ablating or removing tissue to sculpt the curvature of the cornea. The other laser that we have uh, here is the Bausch & Lomb Zyoptics uh, laser. And this is the most updated version. This is the 100 hertz version. Both of these lasers have uh, what we call custom treatments using uh, wave front technology. Uh, and we found uh, for visual quality, especially night vision or dim lighting conditions, uh, things like that, uh, we get the best results, uh, the best visual quality with the wavefront treatment. Uh, the nice thing about us having uh, two different uh, lasers is that we can kind of tailor the uh, laser to the patient. Uh, so some patients, uh, like Monica, are, uh, are very nearsighted. And what I've found in my experience is if they're very nearsighted, that we get the most accurate, the best possible results with the Visitex custom treatments. But the bottom line is that there's advantages and disadvantages of each laser, and it's very nice to have both options because there's some patients where, you know, from my experience, uh, which is extensive, uh, I find that there's certain prescriptions and certain people sizes and things like that that may do better with one laser than with the other, and it's nice to have both options uh, to give to the patient. So. And let's bring you over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably hard to see, even see the yeah. bed very well. I want you to look at the clock right now. You see, can you tell me what time it is? No. It's pretty blurry, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm going to help you up here. Your head's going to be right up the top towards Neil. There we go. We'll get you comfortable. There we go. All right. Seem, it's going to seem real bright at first, okay. and we'll make some adjustments. There's going to be a blinking kind of orangish light that you're going to see. I just want you to focus on that light, just like it's a target. A little bit brighter. Hi, this is Jesse. I'm actually the editor, and because I edited it, I know exactly what's happening. Um, and then Monica's here. I'm right here, and I'm going to tell um, how I felt at each uh, step of the way. Doing real well. You're going to feel some pressure, nothing sharp. This is just a little suction cup that holds the eye real still when we're making the flap of the laser. It's nice and relaxed for me. You're doing real well. It's nice and relaxed. And suction on. A lot of pressure now. This is where your vision is. You'll black out on you and that's totally normal. And it's nice and relaxed for me. Nice and relaxed. You're doing real well. It's very relaxed. You're doing There's an outline, a little yellow outline, um, in the other shot that has a flat area on the bottom. There's the contact with the eye. And the flat area is where the eye, uh, the cornea, actually stays attached. And very relaxed. You're doing great. And right now, I didn't really feel anything here, so um, this was easy. <laughs> this part was easy. Yeah, this is where the laser is actually cutting the flap. Getting towards the end, maybe about 10 more seconds or so. Looking good. Okay. Yeah, pressure's going to come off. That's, that's the hardest part, to be honest. Uh, the rest of the other laser... You don't even really feel much pressure at all. And I'm going to put a cover over the right eye now. I'm going to turn your head back towards the center. We're going to put a numbing drop in the left Here's eye. Here's some more numbing drops. Do you appreciate the numbing drops? I do appreciate the numbing drops. They're not afraid to give them to you while you're there, apparently. It's nice and steady on the light. You're doing real well. Same as before, just open both eyes nice and wide for me. Here, uh, this little device actually creates a suction, nice. and because of the suction, it holds your eye still so that it doesn't move around while they're making the flap and nice create an imperfection. Nice and steady on that line. This was the hardest part, I guess. It didn't hurt. Um, I just didn't know what to expect. And there was just a lot of pressure, like someone pressing down on my eye. But there was no pain. I was just really anxious about it. But um, it's a lot of pressure. 
Now we're going to come up for another contact. And the eye nice actually gets all flat. Nice and relaxed. Going very well. Nice and relaxed. It's very relaxed. The laser will start firing nice on the and bottom and then will only actually start cutting when it gets to the flat place on the yellow outline. It's very still. And it's moving up horizontally um, through the eye instead of straight into the eye. I'm not sure how they get it at the angle. It's a very complicated machine. You can see the air bubbles uh, forming in the eye, especially when they take it off. You can see air bubbles form in that flap right there. See? The flap on the left eye. I don't think I felt anything at this point. I, and now I think about it, I don't think I felt the laser yet until they start um, with the flap open. And then I think I felt it then. Toward your chest, perfect, that's good. It's gonna get bright again. Yeah. What's it like seeing that? Watching it right now, it's kind of creepy, but I know it didn't hurt, so it's not that bad. <laughs> So just a little island holder just to keep it. Here's a scene from the Clockwork Orange. That's what Monica said anyway. <laughs> yeah, this part was kind of freaky because you could see the things coming at you, but you didn't feel it, so <laughs> that was fine. And you took medication before the surgery to make you not care? I did because I was a little nervous, so they gave me some Valium. A little bit of pressure. Valium. Not too bad. This is where they're going to actually separate the flap and pull it off of the front of the eye so that they can keep the perfectly smooth surface on the front of the eye intact while they dissolve the uh, surface underneath the eye with the laser. So I didn't feel him doing this, really, this part, until the flap opens. Um, I know he said it was going to get a little bit blurry, but I just remember it going black when he pulled the flap off. So that was kind of um, unexpected, but again, there is no pain, so I was okay. The flap is stored on the bottom of the eye, kind of like a folding door, until they finish with the lasers. It's nice and steady, nice and steady. This is just a little sponge uh, that they actually dry off the eye with. If there's too much water in there, um, it can throw off the trajectory of the laser and things like that with refraction. So they need a pretty dry surface for the laser. It's also apparently the grossest part. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird watching it back, but it didn't hurt. And so I'm glad it didn't hurt. And they're really good about making sure that you're comfortable. Drying the... Everything looks beautiful. See, that's there. so weird. Nice and it looks like a peeled grape. Good. It really does. Doing very well. Nice and steady on that you can see the blue circling light, and that is their powerful laser, actually. And here's little bursts of smoke coming off the eye. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, but they're getting sucked into an air tube, uh, so it doesn't smell bad and removing the material um, makes the eye flatter on the front and that is Excellent. what actually corrects the vision now. is the change in the shape of the lens. Smooth down the flap, it's going to start getting clear as well. This was kind of weird because when he put the eye drop in, it was very cool and it kind of felt good after the laser. I mean, you can't really feel the laser, but it feels like little bursts of air and then you can actually smell it. Um, it's like hair burning, but it's not that bad. But I know that the drop afterwards felt really good. And you can see him rubbing this thing across my eye and that was kind of weird because I couldn't feel it, so there was no desire to make him stop. <laughs> you know how that is? Make it stop. Wait, don't make it stop. Don't make it stop. <clears throat>
Are you saying that it was pleasant? Well, it felt good when he put the flat back on. <laughs> that sounds weird, but it was cool. <laughs> it was uh, um, like a refreshing drop from my eye or something. Okay, some more drops. And with the uh, interlaced flaps, it just looked perfect every time. And close both eyes. And just going to gently dab. And we are all done with the right eye. How are you feeling? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you feel better when we're done with both eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Pressure again. And same as before. Just try to look at that blinking orange light. I had to wear goggles for a week. So I guess for a week. You wore them around the house and like out in public? No, just to bed. Because <laughs> that's the only time where... You probably do it without knowing, um, but I really had to be careful during the day too because uh, I have a habit of rubbing my eyes. So, if you do have a habit of it, just be aware of that. Looking good. There we go. Nice. That looks creepy. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like the lady from Guinness Book of World Records who can yes. pop her eyes out. <laughs> Very good. It looks painful, but really, you can't feel that. Doing real well. Pretty loud. It sounds like a machine gun that a mouse would use. Almost done. Excellent. It Very did sound job. like that. <laughs> Following the light, you're doing great. <laughs> Start getting clearer now. And um, just be aware that I was very nervous about doing this, but they made me feel so comfortable and just talked me through the whole thing. So um, I think I did pretty well. I wasn't, um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I think just the unknown is what nice scares us the, the most. Keep looking right at that blinking line. It is weird. After watching this video, therefore, you should have no fear whatsoever. Beautiful. Yeah. A couple more drops. This is probably the time in your life when you'll have the most different kinds of fluids going into your <laughs> eyes, and, as far as eye drops are concerned. Close both eyes. And big sigh of relief. You're all done. Got a good smile from you, though. <laughs> That's the end of our commenting, so thank you for watching or listening to us. It's hard to know what to expect ahead of time, but after it's over, usually it doesn't seem as bad as what you thought it was going to be. So. Okay, we well, did great. You're a very good patient. I'm going to take one more look at your uh, eyes with the uh, microscope again. And um, remember how you were trying to see the clock before? Yeah. You see anything? Quarter to, or five to twelve. Yeah. Please. All right. It's going to have a big fog around it right now, but yeah. but you can see it yeah. <laughs> versus <laughs> before surgery. It's hard to make out that there was even a, yeah. even a clock there. So. I'm still a little bit nervous, even with the Valium. So, um, didn't know what to expect, but like you said, it was just uh, a lot of pressure, but that's about it. I was expecting pain, so that's why I was nervous, but it was just pressure and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, um, and I can see right now, it's just really foggy. But this is a lot better than I could see before. Oh, yeah. So. How much do I think of Right now, it's foggy still, but I can see you and I can, see the doctor and I can see the clock, which before I probably would not be able to see the dial even from here. So, it's kind of impressive. Right. And then after taking a nap for a few hours, you should get another uh, photo <laughs> shot because yeah. her vision will be even, a, even much more clear. I'm going to take a look at the flaps because this is, we call this a, we call this a slip lamp, but it's really kind of a very high resolution microscope. And I can see quite well underneath the uh, laser microscope, but with a little slip beam, you can see the flap uh, uh, contour extremely well. So we're really just looking to make sure there's no tiny little microscopic, uh, we call them stria, like wrinkles in the flap or anything like that. So just verifying that the flap is completely pristine and perfect. So. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 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 <sighs>
All right, so as you guys can see, LASIK was successful. Monica can see the time on the clock right after she got off the operating bed. And um, all that's left now is the follow-up exam to make sure everything healed and is working smoothly. Um, so until next time, I'm Andrew Edwards. In our next episode, we'll take you there. Stay tuned for more tech news through the eyes of gearlive.com.